Uh, this is Flotilla Friday for Ju uh, July 9th, 2021. Uh, and uh, Lauren was just talking about how it would be really cool to um, uh, take the Kiko Lab knowledge repository and uh, and then uh, look to uh, Trove is is collecting some of that. Um, Massive Wiki is probably going to collect some of that. Uh, take the knowledge repository and condense it down to like ten percent of the size it is. Um, make it more more concentrated, more powerful, more uh, internally aligned, maybe. And then uh, adding in group uh, agreements, the idea of group agreements, organized group agreements uh, in Massive Wiki. I think it makes a lot of sense. Can I add one more thing um, now that Wendy's here is that um, I also think uh, that it would be nice to get uh, before Wendy, before you like hire uh, an illustrator uh, or professional graphic designer to actually do some mock-ups for you and just like some something simple like Miro and just start um, to show people what you envision and then just to start it in a non-technical way um just by hand and having people start testing that as soon as possible yeah i've had the same thought that mirror board's probably the best tool i have a converse i set up a meeting with tom nixon on um, which i love thank you for having him that was that was fabulous yeah um and definitely attracted a lot of my attention in terms of being one of those um you know, system maps or concept maps that aligns more closely than other things I've seen to what I've been envisioning. And then Pete and I had a nice long conversation this week too. And I want to get uh, and talk to Michael, uh, is it Grossman from Factor? What's his last name? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I can't decide whether, if you think Miro would be helpful to the group, then that makes sense to me completely. Otherwise, I think I would have gone off and tried to actually just cr create some sort of prototype that is a little more dynamic because of course Miro can't be the, can't have the dynamic sense. But if you think just like a, almost a knowledge tree or concept tree or some, some sense of a flow chart of how I'm seeing things connect would be helpful to everybody else. I'm happy to do that. Yeah. I'm glad you said something. Yeah, I think it'd be, I'd love for people to actually know what you're doing and start understanding like, how how does what you're doing in uh, Massive and Trove, how do they connect? And even if it's like a janky kind of like do it ourselves kind of way, is it just to have them conceptually understand? Um, yeah. yeah, I can I can start working on that. Um, my time, I family visiting, and then I'm away in New Hampshire, so. So the quickness will not be as fast as you want it to be. I think we all wish it was yesterday, right? When we when we come upon these ideas of going, wow, this would really help. I know I'm in that situation a lot. I wish I had this thing. Um, so I'm just giving you a heads up. It's going to take, it'll take a little bit. But if you're willing to start with a really simple, quick and dirty version, I could churn that out pretty fast. That's exactly what I'm trying to encourage, quick and dirty. And to add to what Lauren said, it would be great if you could actually mm, like create a prototype that actually is useful for you or for a group or for someone else, right? So like take one use case and make like a static solution for it that can't be scaled and can't be replicated and isn't data driven, um, but is like solving some, some problem that everyone's wisdom and that way to visualize the data would solve. Yeah. So for me, I keep trying to figure out which is the best project to be that first pass. And it's possible, you know, when Pete and I were talking this week, we were talking about maybe there's a way that there's a visual we can put onto Massive Wiki, right? Or Vincent, maybe there's a way that I can start taking, say, the Kiko Lab section of Trove and 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 do it that way. Right. And I guess for me a mirror board version of those things, it will be way too manual, right? I'm trying to t do that with the next phase, right? And, and start to overlay some stuff, but that may be too big of a step. So we'll see. So if, if I'm, I'm open to feedback on that and I will be very motivated <laughs> as Lauren just motivated me, right? I'm very motivated to take the steps that are in service to other people. If it's helpful to other people, I'm much more motivated than when I'm just playing around with it for myself.
you have a, a so that makes a lot of sense i'm much more motivated when other people need something and i can help um but another another approach is to pick something that you're passionate about um and you know when you when you're really interested in in something it's easy to map it <laughs> um another thing by the way even uh uh, you can even start with paper and pencils or pens or whatever. Um, uh, so, you know, and helping other people see what you see and, and uh, however that is easiest, you know, Miro is easier than paper for some things. Paper is easier than Miro for some things. Um, uh, Vincent also mentioned graph commons uh, in the channel. Um, I'm, I'm mapping, um, I was just doing a little bit of it this morning, uh, so it's fresh on my mind. I'm mapping music. <laughs> um, pop music is, you know, I, I like I like listening to music, and it's really important in my life. So it's really easy for me to do a little bit um, all the time. Um, uh, anyway, one of the things I bumped in today was um, I've I've got a, a wiki started that's got performers and songs and performances, and I realized today I need to add um, uh, musical styles. Uh, and then musical cells is this whole rat's nest because they, they really overlap and everybody has a defi different definition of, of uh, what there's, you know, what this song is in musical style. So um, that combined with another thing that I've got going on where I'm thinking that uh, in the olden days, we'd have big encyclopedia wikis. And I think the, the right way to do a wiki is kind of the way that we're doing federation, small, little, um, uh, chunks. So I'm imagining the there's the my my music wiki is separate from my personal knowledge base wiki, and um, so I was thinking. I'm also thinking how we can make a group set of wikis. Uh, so one of them is profiles, uh, and I think that's a whole wiki people, um, and then another whole wiki is books, and another whole you know it, wiki might be uh, styles of thought or you know knowledge processes or something like that so um so the cool thing is i'm doing something i love and i'm running into these problems you know because once you start having multiple wikis um how do you tie them all together right and we don't um massive hasn't really run into that problem where we have to tie them together but now that i've got enough pieces lying on the floor i can say okay now i'm going to have to start stitching these together into something somehow so Where are you, Lauren, that you have bald eagles? I'm at my parents' house. And awesome. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, eagles aren't as cool as they sound. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have hawks in the neighborhood. And um, I think what happens, it, it's like every spring, what happens is the kids grow up enough that the parents are kicking them out of the nest and they the kids fly around like screeching and like please don't kick me out you know i don't know where to go and you know everything is bad so literally for a couple hours every morning is this screeching 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 and it's pathetic you know <laughs> also eagles have like very vigorous amorous activities <laughs> Thankfully, I think ours do that farther away, um, not not in the neighborhood. Yeah, uh, that was uh, the, the previous discussion. Wow, that was fast and we covered a lot of ground. That was really cool. So you were going to say something. I was just say, speaking of nature, we've had a pretty rough like 24 hours here in New York. Um, I know Michael's experienced some flooding. We we had flooding here as well. I think I know Michael's on the call, but I think he lost power a bit today. Um, but yeah, it's been the rain has been kind of insane. Where are you guys? Uh, so I'm in in Yonkers uh, on the Yonkers Bronx kind of border, and Michael's a bit further upstate. Yeah, I'm in uh, it's in Putnam Valley. I'm I'm burning. I have no Wi-Fi, so I'm just a uh, burning phone, and uh, you know, see how long how long my tether lasts. I'm, I might blink out video before I I'll blink out otherwise. So wow, I'm in a pretty so pretty place, but no power. 
and bald so you're, eagles. You're home again. You're not in California. I'm not in California. Right. I, was, and I took a red eye yesterday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Right into the storm. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm in, I guess we got lucky then because I'm in upper Westchester, New York. And so, and we're fine. So how did that happen? I mean, we got rain, but no flooding, no trees are down, you, no power are you out. Nice egg power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, us too. Well, we we just went out anyway. Sorry, anyway. not to divert the call on matters of. No, but it it puts an exclamation point on your being here. <laughs> that you. <laughs> Westchester is uh, the county north of New York City. And, um, and, and so uh, we are an hour north and slightly east of New York City. And, and Putnam County is the next county up from Westchester. So, so Wendy and I are actually quite, I mean, Wendy, Phil and I are all within, you know, a probably 45 minute drive of each other right now. Oh, I'm gonna be in New York next week. And Vincent's so off on the island. We're we're you know, come, let, let, we should have a get together somehow. Vincent, how did you get through the storm? I'm sorry to just I just it was a huge storm. <laughs> I want to make sure you're okay. I'm good. Yeah, um, I don't think any damage here in Long Island. Although I was in my like upstairs room where I usually take my calls, and it's surrounded by three windows, and a lightning bolt must have hit somewhere. Um, like within a mile because I got I literally jumped I got scared and I was like laughing afterwards during the call and I was muted and people were wondering why I was like jumping around and laughing <laughs> from the thunder so loud but uh, yeah it would be great to do a, a New York get together Yeah, so Lauren, when do you come in to the... I'm coming in on the 19th. I'm sure we can make something work somewhere, somewhere uh, central. Where are you going to be? Where in New York? Where are you going to be staying? I am going to be everywhere in New York. Okay. <laughs> cool. But Manhattan, Brooklyn, upstate, all that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not really upstate, but I'll be okay. around, you know, Connecticut, whatever. Okay. We'll figure something out. Oh, cool. Our power just came on. Nice. Wow. Yay. That was fast. Yeah, so yeah. I have a two-day window between when my brother leaves and when I'm going up to New Hampshire. So I'm, I'll cross my fingers, like the 22nd, 23rd, I was just checking. If it works out great, I would love to, that would be so much fun. And let's let's try and, let's try and make fine. that happen. That would be cool. Yeah, That'd that works cool. for me because I have no plans now. So 22nd or 23rd. Vincent, Phil, get on the, get on the train. <laughs> I, I can do 22nd, I have a wedding on the 23rd. So that's, okay. that's my day. We're coming <laughs> in. Vincent, can you do the 22nd? Uh, I think so. That would be pre-flotilla on Thursday. Yeah, that could work. All right, let's let's try and figure it out. <laughs> we, we should we should do some kind of a doodle or something to, you know. <laughs> there, I think the question is place where do we, do we go? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, Long Island, Manhattan, Yonkers, where uh, upstate? Where do we? Uh, I know you guys probably don't think it's upstate, but I'm going to call it upstate. I mean, I I'll, I can be in Brooklyn, um, which. And Wendy, you're where? I'm sorry, everybody else. <laughs> we probably shouldn't be doing this now here. This is exciting. Yeah, maybe let's start like a chat group or something. Okay. We'll figure okay. it out because this yeah, could go yeah. on for 15 minutes. Yeah. Yes, true. <laughs> Should we do a, a New Yorkers chat in the Mattermost or something? <laughs> good idea. New York, yeah. sure. The New York sure. chapter. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so good. I think White Plains is in the middle. It's true. Could be true. Yeah. Uh, my wife is from Briarcliff Manor. Um, oh, yeah. And my brother is in Nyack. And my daughter's parents-in-law are going to be traveling 
visiting them in Washington, D.C., and they're all going to go up to New York to see um, my sister-in-law. So I'm jealous. Everybody's going there. <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> Everybody will have to come to uh, Southern California. Uh, come to the Internet Archive in uh, San Francisco. Even better. Yeah, yep. um, we've got space. Uh, Internet Archive is, is uh, the, the building is beautiful, as well as the people and the, the mission and all that. The building is wonderful. Hey, Mark, we want to talk to you uh, about some stuff that we were thinking of um, figuring out how to do with um, Internet Archive content and factor. So okay. um, might be an opportunity for some interoperability. Um, uh, I will uh, direct message you my uh, my info. Cool. And uh, um, please feel free to call. I'm kind of in a meeting until one after this uh, after this meeting. But uh, um, so yeah, cool. Please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so maybe um, maybe back to Wendy's prototyping and uh, use cases and things like that. We could brainstorm through some use cases uh, if if that would be helpful, Wendy. Definitely. I definitely So I think the question would be um, anywhere that a concept map would be helpful to Kika Lab or to an individual project, um, like Trove or like Massive Wiki, what are some ideas in which you think a concept map would be helpful? Because my next step is to work on a, for those who don't know, is to work on a prototype, work towards a prototype design for seeing and interacting and editing information through a concept map. I, I feel like we need a concept map of, of use cases that we might. Um, so, uh, so Kika Lab and then the, um, uh, the knowledge repository is one really good obvious one. Um, uh, one that I happen to know of uh, is uh, Food Systems Realignment, uh, the, the project that Klaus has got. Um, they are actually they, they are like within a couple weeks of, of really hardcore needing mapping. Um, so- I'm sorry, this is new to me. Who's, who's can you say that slower? Who are we talking about? Uh, yes, uh, Klaus Magger. Um, uh, there's a proto-sovereign um, uh, forming uh, that's around food system realignment. Um, have you seen Klaus at all or? Uh, Klaus uh, is uh, an uber subject matter expert uh, in food systems, uh, and he's uh, extremely motivated to uh, help the rest of us uh, fix our, our food system stuff. Um, and so where, where food systems is right now is 90% of the food production and distribution is controlled by like nine entities globally. Um, so that's great. Uh, in some ways, and it's really, really, really terrible in other ways. And especially when you get that big, you end up caring about the wrong kinds of things a lot. Um, so uh, he's on a mission to, um, I don't know if he would say it this way, this is the way that I end up saying it, deconstruct or decentralize the centralization that we've got in food systems and turn it back into local production and local consumption. Uh, so, um, uh, basically, the, the 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 little big the the sovereign that he's got is what it's going to end up doing, and it's 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 been working for a couple months already, and it's doing some additional work right now um, that's not quite this, but pretty soon within a couple weeks, I think, uh, what they want to do is map local food systems um, from farm to fork. So there's a farmer and there's somebody eating food and I can't do it as well as Klaus does, but he can rattle off about uh, eight or, or 10 endpoints there um, from 
the distributors, you know, producer people, people who produce the food and then people who distribute the food and there's logistics stuff in the middle of that. And um, then um, I guess a couple layers of brokers and, and uh, you know, stores and things like that until it gets on, on your plate. Uh, so uh, he has a thing called innovation brokers. Uh, innovation brokers are in flotilla terms, they're more or less matchmakers. Um, uh, but um, innovation brokers also deal. They 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 kind of matchmakers is a is a fairly generic role. Um, and so, um, in the food system map that he's got, um, innovation brokers are actually technical specialists as well as just matchmakers, right? So, um, so they can say they they can talk to a farmer or a farm collective or something like that and say. Uh, the problem that you've got is you don't know market pricing or whatever, or you know you're you're doing the logistics the wrong way, um, and you you've got this inefficiency here. Let's let's put you together with the right people. And so conceptually, to me, when I listen to Klaus, basically all he needs or all they're going to do all um, is map a local food system with all the different parts to it and say, okay, this is, you know, this is the pattern that we see everywhere. And the patterns change a little bit depending on, you know, what country you're in, what part of the world. Uh, but you can kind of generalize it and then you can map a local system and you can say, this part is missing or this part is inefficient, or we can put you together with technology from another part of the world or, or ideas from another part of the world. Um, there's a, there's a cool um, way that people in, I think, Southern and South America, South America, Central America have been intercropping for a couple thousand years at least. And it's the obvious way to do it um, for long-term sustainability. Um, the developed world has forgotten that. And so now some of us are reinventing that and bringing it back to these people that have been doing it for a couple thousand years and saying, look, you should do it this way after we told you to do it the other bad way. <laughs> And they're like, dude, we've been doing that for thousands of years. I don't know why you're bringing it back as this innovation after telling us that we, you know, mucked everything up by telling, by doing what you thought. Anyway, that, so that's an example of something that's old tech versus, you know, new tech or new ways of thinking about things or anyway. Anyway, the core part of it is mapping. The core part of it is conceptualizing connections between things. Um, so it's a it's an urgent need. Um, Klaus is really good at, um, uh, he's retired twice um, uh, and and uh, basically he wants to make sure that his grandkids and his great grandkids have a world that everyone is still eating. In. <laughs> um, uh, so he's hyper motivated and very, um, uh, very uh, 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 focused in a way that go, makes you stand up and, and pay attention and go, yes, that's a problem that we need to solve right now, um, because in 30 years, it might be too late. Um, so that's my yeah, pitch, that's, I guess. That's, right? yeah, that's like perfect example, right? <laughs> if it was just mapping from, it was just the map version where we want to see how the distribution works, then I don't think my solution, I think there's solutions out there already. Right. But if it's the mapping it so we can see where the holes are and then we might be pulling something in from over here and something in from over there. That to me starts to speak exactly to what's missing yep. and that technology can help fill that I'm hoping this design will help will help fill. Um, and that's to me why the design itself needs to be you need to be able to edit in the design because yep. um, and not just at the database level or not just at the page level. Right. So that when you have that idea that these two, that this could be inserted there, that you can, you can draw that connection and start to show other people, hey, I think this might work. Hey, I think that might work so that other people can, can build on it. So, um, yeah, um, I'm very, I'm very um, interested in the same topic. What's, when you were talking about being passionate about something, um, once I started to see the world through kind of this concept, then everything becomes interesting to me, yeah. right? And, and it was really, for me, a growth, this concept grew out of me seeing the, the, the struggle and the system to see where the holes are and see how to fill them. So whether it's that or global warming or 
the complexities in the education system, all of I find all of it interesting for that reason. Uh, some somebody um, doesn't have to be you or or anybody here on the call or maybe it, maybe it should be somebody could sit with Klaus for a few uh, you know one hour sessions or something like that or half hour sessions and he's he is an encyclopedia of uh, food systems and soil health and carbon cycles and all that kind of stuff and he rattles it off and I can understand it but then I can't convey it to somebody else because it's not mapped right. Um, and he'd be a, a, a great uh, subject. Uh, he's, you know, he's he's really easy to work with. Really wants to get the information out there. Um, you know, understand is is uh, very passionate about conveying the importance of it and things like that. So, um, I, Wendy, you and I have a, a a meeting next week. I know. Um, so if we don't catch up before then, I can catch you up a little bit more then. Perfect. Well, if I can uh, bump in for a second, Wendy, I just yeah. talked to a woman named Claudia Brenner, who is a uh, uh, concept mapper and visual artist here in San Francisco, and she is uh, great friends with Bob Horn, who is a uh, um, expert in uh, concept mapping, and uh, uh, Claudia gave me the okay to connect you to her and then to her to Bob if you're interested. So I will, I think I have your email. Um, I will set that up. Thank you. That would be fabulous. Sure. Hey, and Lauren added Bob Horn is coming to Kiko Lab in September and is also good friends with Ken. Hey, love how these things circle back around. Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> Uh, you're muted, Wendy. To maybe brainstorm a bit more, what other ideas do people have? Even if, because if one starts working, then it helps me know, or even if it doesn't work, right? It helps me know what other avenues to try out the concept on. So this is helpful. Thank you. Um, I, go for it, Bill. Yeah, I just have a question, Wendy. Um, so what I did was doing quite a bit of concept mapping when I was teaching the data, scientific data, informatics and stuff. And so the only tool that was available that we and the students could use was CMAP, which, you know, was like, okay, it's usable if you're willing to, you know, just do the work. It's not. C CMAP it, tools is pretty good. Um, it's pretty good, but it also. It, it is not it, great. It, that's all. So I'm thinking, I remember talking with a semantic web person. I said, look, if this is the best tool you have, you know, it's, we need better. We just need something that's, it's not going to really scale the way you, so I'm really interested in what kind of technology we can use to actually uh, represent, you know, because the concept map, well, it does a good job, but I'm reminded of a, essay I read on uh, improvisation, um, musical improvisation, I think by Casals, who basically was arguing with a musician who said to him, hey, that's not written down here in the music. And he looked at him, he said, yeah, our job is to play what's not written down. Because, so I think what you were, for me, getting at is like, there, our representation is going to be what it is, but what you know, can we use it to help us remind us about the stuff that we can't actually be explicit about maybe yet or maybe ever? Yes, 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 yes. So I'm curious about what tools we can try and use next. And I'm willing to brush up my CMAP skills again. But I think what's interesting to me is that something like this hasn't found its way yet. And, and I think, I don't know. I don't know if it's just that, I mean, we're all, I think in our own ways, hitting up against the limitations of the current, of current development to, to this point, right? Where we recognize the need for collaboration or for creative thinking or for innovation or for making associations between things that, that, that computers can't make associations between because they don't seemingly go together, only we know they go together. Um, and, and 
I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's just that the technology hasn't been uh, you know, ready to do this yet. Um, it's not necessarily aligned for commercialism. So there's not necessarily a, a benefit, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> and so all of that together, I think it, it, I've you know, just been curious about like, why doesn't this exist already? But it doesn't. And so I have been motivated to keep taking step forwards. I'm also have no background in software myself, but um, I have an appreciation for it and a conceptual understanding of it. Um, my interest is more and came from the area of psychology. So, and, and helping people thrive and helping bring out the best in people. So with all that said, I just feel like I'm, I, this idea has pestered me more than I have been pursuing the idea. And so I eventually just one day said, okay, I'll just keep moving forward on it. And hopefully it'll find, find its way into the world because it's needed. Um, and as I've explained to some other people on this call, it's one of those things where if uh, someone else is doing a piece of it already, or I see a piece of it, I'm happy to go, great, that piece already exists. But this is the piece that I think that is still missing. And um, I'm happy to carry it forward for as long as is needed. So this group coming together to help me figure out what would be the next best step for this idea to come into the world in a way that would serve the group or serve the project or take another step. I'm happy to use a product that already exists, whether it's Miro or whether it's, you know, CMAP tools or something else. But ultimately I have found, I'm just going to need to create something like it, 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 I don't think a platform exists that's close enough that we can use it for this purpose, I think we'll eventually need to leap and make something. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> yeah, so I think that what we should do is just try and, you know, when just pick something you think and start making representations. And if you don't have it, you know, if you have to add like notes or post-its or whatever, I mean, why do people cover their computer screen with post-its? It's because they need all this information and it's not available in the UI. But I know what to do about that. So I think we just have to, I mean, I've been experimenting with linking certain kinds of threads in email notes. And it's just like, I really don't know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna try this. Even though I know it's like just, you know, too simple. So maybe if we just started doing the representation we would find some kind of a pattern that could be supported in some way. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I think some, I, you know, I'm like, we've got to experiment here without and see where we get. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, right. And I keep, you know, I have a version in my head that's 10 years from now. I've thought about this so much and I have a version that's, you know, I could slap on a Miro, but wouldn't begin to represent what I'm hoping this thing will do one day. Right. So, that's that's why your feedback is helpful because right taking one little step forward might be helpful in the short term but eventually i think a larger step forward is also helpful because it helps to give people a vision even if we can't fully integrate it yet and i'm not saying the technology doesn't exist it's just a turn in terms of time right to, to develop something like that um the delay that might be required in order to develop something more fully and knowing as with any development project, it's going, there's going to be a phase one, there's going to be a phase two, there's going to be a phase three, you know, so it'll be forever evolving. Um, I, I agree with you. I get frustrated by all the same stuff. And, and it's when I got to the point where I felt like I needed my own site or this own capability to create the capability. And that's what somebody was saying a little earlier. It's almost like I need this capability to envision what this is going to be that I knew I needed to start creating something. I feel the same way. <laughs> um, and I have, I have a, a potential use case, if, if, unless anyone else has anything else they wanted to respond to that. Go for it, Vincent. So uh, Lauren just left, but um, we left off, we were having a conversation um, about so right now there's a database in Airtable of the different appreciation um, like forms that people have submitted and it's 
like so it's it's very uh structured data so it's um you know who um appreciated who it's a type of appreciation then there's like um different like um subtypes and like flavors like was really good at note taking or uh, was a great facilitator and then there's also like free text like a description and there's about I think over a hundred of these um, and so Lauren asked if I could make a visualization of basically um, all these different appreciations and how people are appreciating each other um, and I was in the middle of trying to do that during a call um, on Graph Commons, but for some reason it wasn't working. But that, that seemed like something that could be really cool to work on. Um, Wendy, if you want to take a stab at that with me with, the, with Graph Commons, just, and just playing around with it and see uh, what the limitations would be. Yeah, I'd be game. I think what's interesting about that one is, um, once we have it mapped in visual, be curious to see what, where it goes, right? Like, what do people do with that? Do they feel like they just want to see it? Or does it inform them into creating new connections or new levels of appreciation or realizing these two people go together because they have the same skill or they have the same strength or they have the same, right? So to me, that's where my idea starts to layer in. The first step is the is the mapping of the resources or is the mapping of what's already available, but then the second step and, and beyond come when we use that information to, to make new connections. So I'd be, that would be fun. It would be fun to see whether that enabled people to see things differently and start making new connections or asking different kinds of questions or whether it just kind of sat there as a resource. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that could be used for like a networking event. So let's say we did like a Kiko Lab networking event. It's be like, you know, you, it, instead of picking someone based off of their like profile or their projects, you could pick them based off of, oh, wow, someone said this really nice thing about you. Um, <laughs> and, and that could be a starting point for conversation. I also think that this relates really strongly to to reputation and the idea of being able to you know overlay that map on on granular information links posted items posted in i mean this is something we've been thinking about a lot in factor context is you want to see the things posted on subject x because even though you don't know that person you know that they are appreciated for their expertise in subject X from the, the reputational map that is given by that um, appreciation graph. Um, so yeah, we should talk about this. <laughs> should I talk about this? And, and how we make it, you know, uh, interoperable. Um, I, I wanted to mention another, another uh, sovereign um, virgins, uh, uh, which is uh, Phelan and uh, Mark Taibo is working with them. Um, so they're, um, uh, they're, they, they work in uh, AR, um, augmented reality. And the idea is place-based, uh, place-based, um, place knowledge and information, basically. Uh, the ability to actually have a, I, I, I guess, uh, imagine, uh, imagine AR. Uh, so you're looking at the, your phone or, you, or glasses or something, and you're walking around and you see a signpost that somebody else has left. Um, and it's actually not just a signpost, but it's actually a, a trail. Uh, so a narrative and also a, a way of walking through it, right, in the real world. Um, uh they're so they're working on you know uh spatialized visualization um so i think it's worth talking to them just about that and the way they think about it uh and then also the idea of narrative through space and time and uh co collaboratively working on uh you know sharing uh narrative through space and time uh and then working on collective knowledge that way too uh, Julian Gomez is also working with them. He's uh, for the, the 
folks of us, maybe nobody's here from Free Jerry's Brain, but um, Julian works on 3D visualization uh, of knowledge. So, so whenever I whenever I'm imagining, uh, you know, I I got uh, I I was on a kick trying to map. Um, actually, uh, the Plex uh, is what one of the names I have for, or the primordial soup, the collection of sovereigns that that we all kind of mix and match through. Um, and I was really frustrated by not finding the tools. The the tool that I can imagine in my head uh, is a, a kind of a 3D thing that you would find in Star Trek or Minority Report or whatever. But it's a fuzzy, has fuzzy clouds for organizations, right? Um, because especially in our organizations, we have these fuzzy boundaries, and uh, something like OGM in particular is fuzzy to like where you you can't really draw an edge to it. Um, so it doesn't make sense to have it be a ball, you know, it's more like a cloud or something like that with fuzzy edges and, and you say, you know, who, who attends all the calls, who attends most of the calls, who attends on a call once in a while, you know, and depending on how that, you know, if you're talking to the thing that creates this 3D visualization in space that you can grab onto and move around, you know, let's make the OGM thing bigger and smaller depending on what I'm talking about when I say OGM. Um, or let me put OGM over here and pull out Flotilla. Um, and here's Flotilla and the things that it's connected to. And it's, for me, it's fuzzy colors, spatial, and something that I can grab with hands, right? We'll get there someday, but. Yeah, I keep ways thinking about, from... yeah, like Iron Man, the, the, the visions, yeah. you know, where he has the yeah. multiple screens and then he can bring yeah. up a 3D model of something and then make that yeah. go away and then play with the parts. Yeah, I mean, in my mind, the the version, the the concept mapping I have in my head is a, is a bridge between what we have now and what that could be, right? The VR. So yeah. if one of these leaps that we can take is actually a much bigger leap forward because VR is ready to support that experience of and really interacting with the VR, not it being prescribed and you know things, then then that would be super cool. <laughs> One of the things that I have been interested in is, you know, basically navigating through information space. And certainly um, there's a problem in that, you know, everybody has different, for example, if we take the brain and we look at different maps that different people have made and try to like overlay them, they use directions for different notions. Um, so there's semantic, um, gap in terms of, oh, if I turn right, does that mean a question? If I turn left, does that mean an answer? If I go up, does that mean super class? If I go down, does that mean subclass? Um, and there's many, many, many more directional affordances or maybe affordances isn't the best term, but you know that is a sneaky thing. I've got a medical call which I don't want to miss, I'm sorry. To pick up on oh. that from Mark, um, uh, one of the interesting things about watching Jerry use the brain uh, is that the brain is kind of a, a base set of tools and then Jerry has a uh, informal taxonomy that he, he has in his head that's built on top of that. Um, so when you watch Jerry give a tour through his information space, he's using a bunch of navigational clues, you know, where things, how things are attached that aren't built into the tool. They're, um, they're affordances that he essentially added to the tool by, by his practice of it. Um, and, and if somebody gives you the brain and tells you to do what Jerry did with his, his information space, you go, oh, how did he do that? I don't, you know, I, and the, the tool, the, it, it's not in the tool, right? It's actually in his use of it and the way that he uses it. Massive Wiki has got the same thing, by the way, maybe even worse. Massive Wiki is just a way of interconnecting information, but then unless you have some way of structuring the the way that you use that interconnection, um, it it's hard to use. Uh, so you have to have some conventions about, you know, um, uh, 
one of the sets of convention you use is uh, chunk. I, I have a phrase chunking and linking and naming chunking, naming and linking. Um, what what's the chunk size for information? And when you have a chunk of information, uh, how do you name it? Do you name it with this really long name? Do you name it with a short name? Um, do you give a little hint in the name? This is a person or not? Um, and then uh, and then when you've got things chunked and named, then you can start linking together. But uh, different different teams and different people come up with different uh, idioms or um, uh, or dialects of using the same basic information uh, atoms. Um, they'll come up with different ways of of structuring the atoms together in a way that's not part of the tool. It's part of the culture of the of the set of people using it and and. One of the fun, one of the most fun things I've I've experienced with wikis is just the interaction of creating that culture together. You know, um, oh, it looks like you're using person colon in front of all people's page names. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? You know, um, just those kinds of questions and and thinking through things together and and coming up with that um, the. You know, it, it's kind of like uh, Bill. You were talking about music, sheet music. You know, shows you the notes, but it actually doesn't. There's a bunch of stuff that's how to play the notes that is not part of the sheet music that you know as a musician that you know. Oh, I think this is probably the way they meant to do it. Or in a ensemble, you go, "Hey, let's do it this way or that way," and the 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 music leaps off the page in a way that's not just what's on the page. Yeah, that book I read by Pablo Casals on improvisation has some great stories about somebody. He was telling this, you know, this little uh, musical group he was leading. He goes, yeah, don't worry about the time thing. We'll catch up by the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, do you know the name of that book? Uh, it's downstairs in my library. I'll get it later. Gotcha. I'll, I'll look it up. It was a, just a tremendous read for many reasons um, um so the thing well i'm still i'm just sort of i want to see what wendy breaks i want to see what you i want to see this thing whatever it is <laughs> or some part of it if, if even if it's just a drawing on a piece of paper i will throw out one tool that pete didn't mention this time because he was talking in terms of multi-dimensional cloud thing but there is a simplified tool called scapple which is just a piece of paper with just like, you know, nodes and lines, and you can put whatever you want on the thing. So it's not a mind map, which is an outline. It's just a piece of paper and you can put circles and it could be ideas or what, you know, whatever, just, and you can link them together and you can label, you know, you can put whatever link you want between it because, so there is some, there is something about this mapping that, it reifies in certain ways, you know, and so that either distills a connect for me, sometimes it distills a connection I wasn't clear about that helps you make it clear, or it basically says, well, that's, you know, this is kind of limited as a picture. So, but I'm just really excited about seeing what you said, you know, somewhere like, oh, maybe I can, you know, take that little thing over to my sofa and, you know, think about it for a while. Um, Scapple is still the, the fastest tool I have for brainstorming. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not perfect, but it's it's always friendly, at least, which is a It's big really deal. simple to get things down, right? Yeah. And the, um, and the other thing about it, which it's it's strange to value this and not strange at all but um it's it's very fast um it's it's it has a fairly fairly small learning curve it does have a tiny bit of a learning curve but it's small um but then once you're used to it you can be super fast and for me at least um uh it, at, in contrast miro is just slow enough it, it's just laggy enough um, that it's like, I can't, I can't think, you know, I can't get into flow with it and scalpel. I can do flow. The other, th the, the amazing random thing that <laughs> I found with Miro is, 
um, I, I tried, you know, I, one day I, I sat down and I tried four different tools. It was Scalpel and Whimsical and Draw.io, and actually now I think about it, and, and Miro. Um, uh, and I was like, I'm going to learn this Miro thing. I'm just going to do it because everybody loves it and it's awesome. And not to say that it's not awesome, it's totally awesome, but it's awesome in different ways than the quick brainstorming thing that I, I need to do sometimes where Scalpel shines. And the thing that Miro totally fell down for me one was I put a node and then I put some other nodes around it and then I draw lines and Miro could not get the lines coming you know the radiating lines coming back to a center it could not get them in the same place reliably you know if I move things around they, the line the center of the line would jump around all over this node right and it always looked ugly no matter what because some of the lines kind of got connected to the center some of them connected to a aside and it's like please Miro this is not that hard and I can't imagine how you can make because you can't make a pretty diagram because the lines all misconverge right so then I, I went I was like okay this is and just to like uh, assure myself that that I hadn't fallen into an alternate universe where lines weren't supposed to converge or something like that I went to the other tools you know and I played with that and scalpel just does it beautifully um, whimsical does this amazing thing where uh, when you connect a line to a node where you can connect it wherever in the node, but then it stays there in that node, which is really cool, actually. Um, not super useful, I, I ended up deciding, but um, but anyway, that, that one thing with Miro is, just drove me crazy. It's like, I can't believe it. Um, and I have to put it aside, you know, no matter what else I can do with Miro, if I'm drawing um, uh, rays, and nodes, nodes and lines, I can't use it. Literally, I can't use it because it just makes stupid diagrams. I can't believe it. I, I'm just not, a, I can't, I hate to say it, but maybe I just, you know, my hair's too gray. I can't, I cannot reliably use Miro. It just goes all over the place. I have a slight tremor in my hand, so sometimes the mouse does something. Yeah. And I'm just like, I, I cannot, you know, the affordances for me are not, doesn't work. I can, I've not been able to get over being able to sit down and, you know, so I certainly can't use it when I'm on a call because there's no, <laughs> there's no splitting of attention at all. Like at least I can type in, you know, I can type in my, in a text file and take notes while I'm on a call. Um, let me, uh, I'll, I'm going to share my screen real quick just to show uh, Wendy maybe what scalpel looks like. Um, you don't necessarily need to be sold on it, Wendy. Um, uh, it's I mean, anyway. You know, as a simple, as a quick pass, I don't need all the post-it notes and everything else that Miro can do. That, and I think it does well, yeah. right? I really need the node and spoke and lines and right. That's the piece I'm going to need as a first pass. So if it doesn't do that well, it'll drive me nuts. Um, this is a, a scalpel map um, that it's started nice off. One. It's gotten big, Pete. <laughs> yeah, I've got a bigger version of it, but it's got more, even more mm, nice. private information on it, so I don't show that one. Um, but anyway, this kind of map is really easy to, to set up. And then there's some things to notice that um, almost all the lines are the same because mostly I speak, <laughs> I speak this dashed line. Um, uh, uh, and if it's, it's, it was really interesting. Um, I still owe the world. Uh, so this is the, the gesture for connecting a line like that. You just drag one thing over the other thing. Um, uh, but then you always get these dashed lines. So I have to actually look at the docs to get a solid line like this with an arrow. Um, but I, I guess I, I still owe the world a, a video of the, the different tools I used and, and what was important to me. Um, another thing is being able to be arbitrary with the placing of, of a node. Um, uh, so a lot of tools will end up having a grid because they want they want you to be able to align things and, and aligning stuff uh, is super important. Um, the, uh, the scalpel way to do that is you can select things um, and then uh, you can do different alignments with these. And the, the, there isn't a gesture for this, um, but I can align the left edges of that um, that way. So instead of a grid, I've got this alignment tool and um, it does some cool things like uh, 
the order in which I selected those is important. So if I select it, actually, I think if I select it that way, it's going to do the other. Yeah. Um, uh, depending on the order that, that you select things, the first one that you select um, is the master for, for alignment, and then everything else aligns to that. Uh, so let me, I, I, I'm not a superb scapular, um, but it does it does do, you know, if I want to draw something like this, uh, this is the tool that I'll start with at least. Um, uh, this is, I, I'm not really, I don't, I could zoom in on this. I don't really have to. Um, this was uh, me um, uh, actually at a food systems call we had recently uh, where I thought I might be able to share this with people because we were doing some uh, intensive mapping actually of um, like feelings and 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 uh, desires and stuff like that um, so I was just I, I didn't end up sharing this with the group because it didn't come out I I, I it didn't I don't know I it's an interesting thing where you map stuff and you go well I captured about 80 percent of it or or 70 percent of it and it's like because I didn't capture 90 percent of it or 95 percent of it I don't know that it's worth sharing because it's almost misleading what I captured and what I didn't capture, you know, and then so then, you know, I could have finished it off by watching the call and the recording and, and finishing it, but it's not worth doing that. And, you know, anyway, so this is this is a way of these were all captured in real time. Um, so scalpel is pretty good at letting you capture um, stuff loosely and then structure it as as you go when the call slows down a little bit you can start putting things together and then um, works well um, it's it's built almost it's not really it, it's it's got a bigger sibling um, the the developer who developed scalpel also um, developed something called scrivener which is a uh, writing power tool um, for if if you need to write something bigger than about 20 pages, 30, 20 pages, it starts to, to pay dividends that you're using it and 50 pages or hundred pages or a thousand pages. You need something like Scrivener to help you structure stuff. So it's good for writing novels and reports and, and things like that. And if, if you're writing anything like 10 pages or less, it's, it's a waste of time almost, unless you're really good at it. Um, but anyway, you can take, you can map something really quickly. Imagine a novel or something like that. Here's, okay, here's five characters. Here's the way they're going to, the ways they're going to interact. You know, pretty soon you've got a hundred nodes. You just load that into Scrivener and it turns them into pages or whatever cards um, on, and you go from there. I don't, I've used Scrivener and, and I've used it su successfully, but never needed to write that, that big things like that as much. Uh, Scalpel is also um, both on iOS, uh, it's not iOS, it's unfortunately not on iOS, uh, it's both on Mac and, and Windows, which is another big deal, because every once in a while you need to give it to somebody else, or I, I used it for a while on Windows machines, and you know, I'm back on Macs. Cool, thank you. Yeah. And then um, there's always, as I, as I know Pete knows too, uh, there's always good old Procreate. It, it certainly is quick. Procreate, yeah. <laughs> thank, thank goodness, Procreate exists. It it makes up for the loss of um, of Scalpel on an iPad. Procreate is, um, I want to swear, uh, Procreate is awesome, um, and that's what I use for notes on an iPad. Um, so it's not text; it's actually everything is written or drawn. Um, but uh, once you once you learn a couple of, and again, it's got a bit of a learning curve, but once, and it's not, it doesn't, you don't have to be, you don't have to climb a big learning curve to use it pretty effectively. You need to learn layers and some of the masking stuff and things like that, you know, which you can pick up in, in three or four 20 minute sessions with YouTube or something. Um, it's a power tool. Um, it is amazing. And it's, again, with tools, one of the things that, you know, it's friendly, friendly and fast and, and it doesn't let you down and things like that are super important in tools. And Procreate is amazing. And I wish I were so, an artist, but I can still I mean, use it really well. Even without 
you know, knowing the knowing layering and stuff, it's just good to have some, I mean, it's just, you can do anything you can do on paper, but it's easier to erase and it's easier to make a copy and then try a variation. Um, so just from that standpoint, it it's probably a good place to start before going into even, you know, you could sketch something out and then render it with more precision and fully written out stuff on, in sca Scrapple, Scapple. <laughs> keep wanting to call it Scrapple. Um, it's a dumb name. So, so it's a so it's a it's a useful thing to have in your in your quiver. Yep, I totally agree, and and I agree that it's useful without layers, with layers, just just layers, um, because then you can draw you can draw one thing, and then you create a new layer, and you draw another thing, and they're separate, right? You can move them separately and things like that, or or copy one layer, duplicate one layer. It's a power tool. Um, every every kid should get an iPad and Procreate. So is it only um, Mac for Mac then? Uh, Procreate is only iPad, actually. Only iPad. It's it's worth literally worth buying an iPad and a pencil, an Apple pencil. Oh, you talked about this Procreate. before. I it's literally worth it. I'm curious. I'll, I'll demo on the twenty second. <laughs> Um, I'm curious, Michael, if there's any tool like this that you've seen that you use for coming from a designer's standpoint that, you know, because again, Scapple's not going to have the design elements, right? So that I know are important or even have you ever imagined taking all the resources and the, and the um, streams on factor and visualizing them in this kind of way? And if so, what are you working on there? I mean, if... I mean, I do start with things like that on Procreate. Um, and if I'm rendering them wanting to make them presentation, you know, design quality presentation, I would generally go to InDesign or, you know, Illustrator or something where I could, you know, control the type and, and stuff better. But because I, it, it, th those aren't great working tools, you know, process working tools, um, they're more like finishing for presentation tools, um, but you'd end up with something that looks better than what you get on Scapel or, or you know, in Miro. Um, they're not conceptualizing tools; they're presentation tools. Yeah, I guess it's, what I meant is, if you took a stream and the stream, the name of the stream was a node, and all right. the right and all the related um, resources were 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 coming off that node have you ever thought of representing information oh, that's on factor like that yes yes and and in fact that's a goal um but yeah i i thought you meant you know what do i do as a designer like to do that but but the idea of doing um stuff like that on factor is the the two I think I mentioned in, in one of our other meetings um, about like actual geolocation mapping um, within streams on factor, which we had and was just awesome to like take something that, you know, you were seeing as a list, switch to map view, and then have all the things laid out in their actual physical location and then, you know, blow them. Right. My dog is in my lap, so I'm uh, <laughs> getting occasional input from him. Um, yeah, uh, being able to do that um, in an information mapping uh, version by tags and stuff is a goal. We have not um, attempted that. So that's another potential play space. For sure, yeah, and and again, you know, every every time like one of these things come up, I feel like oh, we should do that. <laughs> you know, there's there are things that Factor does that Trove doesn't do, the Trove does that Factor doesn't do, that Massive does that you know, and then everybody's wisdom and like you know how how do we figure out how to make those things interoperable? Just 
you know, is to me the, the fertile ground or in flotilla terms, the, you know, teeming, teeming body of water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm starting to see too. So it's, it's, can, is there a way that we could provide some sort of mapping feature that would overlay a lot of this stuff or bring it together or, yeah. you know, connect it better or, you know, use whatever phrase <laughs> makes sense, you know, um, to, to allow all of them to be used with, you know, more intuitively um, and therefore get the benefits of each one of them to people more quickly, more easily, more right. intuitively, more, you know, and then start to reap the benefits of that connection and collaboration. Yeah. And, and to me, the, the goal of, of all of what we're doing um, is to make the information you have access to like the currency you have access to that, you know, your, your finances look different on, you know, in an Excel doc than they do in, uh, in, you know, mint or in like this other thing. And it's all interoperable because it's all quantifiable and, and, you know, being able to, to look at the same stuff. Um, sorry, I see something. <laughs> um, just getting distracted by the chat. <laughs> all right. Um, no, no, it's cool. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that just the idea that um, you might look at the same information in different tools at different times for different purposes. Um, and we don't all have to be the best at every one of them. Um, you know, we, we each have our way of, of our, we each have our, our aspects that we stress um, and then, you know, feel good about the fact that uh, let's look at this in on Massive Wiki or, you know, yeah, yeah. If I if I'm reading you right, this part of the idea that I've had too, which is, I, I never pictured everyone's wisdom being the content. I always pictured it as helping you get to the content that you need, right? So, it being kind of the funnel of thinking. So I can be in that flow space until I really need to dive, and then when I need to dive, it's a link out to somewhere, or it's you mm. know back to the presentation I was working on, or it's you know it 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 takes me externally again. Um, I mean, Rather also, than it's, it's, it trying to contain everything, because yeah. that's impossible. I mean, it, you know, for, for these things to be lenses um, is, is the way I often think of it, because, um, you know, sometimes you want to look at it. It's like, you know, satellite view versus map view and, and like looking, looking at and directions as a list versus looking at it as a map. All, all those kinds of things seem like what we're all trying to provide. Yeah, I um, not just for Wendy, but for anyone who doesn't know about Solid, I um, I watched this video yesterday, and um, <laughs> Wendy, have you seen it or? Isn't it Tim Berners Lee's project? Yeah. I have been following it in, in fits and spurts for years. When I first heard about it, I, I was like buzzing in the car. It was, I don't know, like a year and a half ago or something. I heard it on NPR and I was like, he's working on what? And even though it had nothing, seemingly nothing to do with my project, I intuitively knew it had everything to do with my project. And so I bet you felt the same way too, Vincent. It has everything to do with this conversation because everything it talks about the... <laughs> when you're creating any tool, because the way that the internet is set up, you, in order to have a useful tool, you need to also have all the data. And so it's like, and that's why like Facebook and LinkedIn don't have to innovate because they have all the data already. And so no one can mm -hmm. just create a better tool. They also need to create a better tool that collects just as much, if not more data to get the network effects. And so, um, yeah, this ties directly into your point of like, I want to create, <laughs> I just want to create like a new interface and innovate on this yes. one piece, but I need to do like in the current context, you need to create a whole new social network just to 
to be able to innovate on the interface, which is insane. And like, I've been, yeah, like with Trove, I like, I wish I could have just had access to data and then make it way better, but I've kind of been, you know, more forced in the direction of making a whole platform. And, and, you know, that's fine because I think Trove is getting to the complexity where that's okay. But yeah, I just, I was inspired by this. And yesterday I basically made a, um, so I have an Airtable database from that I basically, Mark, Antoine and Pete helped me pull from Jerry's brain um, of about, Jerry had about a hundred OGM related organizations. Then I had been curating a list of about 300 organizations that I have been bookmarking into Airtable for years. Then there's another um, change makers database of social impact orgs. There's a few people that submitted organizations on Catalyst already. Like they like added an org themselves and it has like who curated it. And so I basically, after watching that video was like, wait a minute, let me, let me try this again. And I made a, a page on Trove, which is basically an organization directory. And I was able to get it to work to pull from multiple databases and bring all the data together in one place. So I don't actually have to have all the data centralized in Trove's like server to actually display it on, on the site. Um, I basically pulled from like three different databases and like sync them together and then have one directory where you can filter and sort through all the data. If someone edits the information on any of their databases, it'll sync. Um, and then also if somebody like clicks or saves um, a, an organization, I am having it right back to the database with like the number of clicks and saves. So that way you can say, okay, Jerry contributed a hundred orgs, which also each one of these has an average of 10 likes or clicks or saves. This is how useful this contribution was to the whole group. And you could do like NFTs to exchange tokens. So you can like reward people for doing curation and also having like synced decentralized databases that are federated. Um, so yeah, that was a uh, really cool. I was up very late last night working on it. <laughs> That's brilliant. I, I totally get that and see the, you know, I was just actually talking about this with someone yesterday saying how, you know, this idea that when you just think about the energy moving, right? Like sometimes I just try to put it, play this game in my head of, in that context, right? Of energy in our systems, whether you're talking about people or communities or technology, right? And going, okay, so I think what what solid is really bringing to the fore in terms of conceptually understanding the fact that we are duplicating data everywhere and we are storing all that data multiple times or over and we're not even in control of what we of any of it right so it's flipping everything on its head back to giving us control over the privacy and 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 creating a bubble around that from which everything else can can you know can communicate immediately I realized, great, yeah. And if we could just put a GUI user interface like on top of that, there that would change a lot. So I think what you just described, even though I know I'm not intimately involved and don't understand the software development of all that piece, is you basically said instead of trying to bring import the data and put it into your own database, you let the data stay where it is and simply create the communications between to make sure that, which is yeah. great. I and mean. Yes, and that's only possible because of the schema that I've been developing, which um, that I've been almost like infiltrating into different groups. So like anyone who's doing mapping of certain like organizations, like I have like a, a structured data schema that um, based off of like years of doing this, that I'm almost like, okay, here, this is the format that you put it in. And that way all this data can actually be, be synced. And so like, and yeah, Michael, it's definitely, um, I started doing this work before I figured, uh, learned about murmurations. There's definitely some, some overlap. And now that I'm involved into the like, like CTA, I'm, I'm sure there'll be some, some synergies there. I'd love to be involved in the murmurations project, honestly, because it feels just so complimentary with um with what i'm doing already it doesn't make sense to to create another standard um but i do feel like the last time i looked at murmurations it was it seemed very focused on like place based uh like 
regen villages and farms. Um, and I've been creating a schema that kind of goes, it's like for tools or resources or like different things, but the same exact like context. Um, so this is like, yeah, this is one of the, so this database has 540 um, organizations right now. And then I have the sync source. So these are the different sources that it's being pulled from. Um, one of these sources is Jerry's brain data. Another one is, uh, there's some stuff that yeah, Peter Jones um, added um, a group. Um, I added a bunch of groups into some different um, databases I have. And then I have basically the like trove and catalyst like categories. So I have like audiences, who is this for topics, um, the types, and then I have for each one of these like multiple and then like a main type. So this is like nonprofit. And then I have what I'm calling entity type, which like these are all organizations. Um, and an organization could be also a resource. It could be also a community. Um, and then it has networks, um, other related groups, images, URL, description. And then basically where this goes is um, and this came out of also prodding from Trudy Miller to separate out the um, groups that have a community inside of Trove and the organizations that are like public organizations that are in the directory that aren't even involved with Trove. So, um, and I added that as a filter so people actually know like are all these on Trove or do they all have groups there? And so I have this like check marks where it's like, okay, no, these are actually the, the groups that are on Trove that have a community page. These other ones are just groups that we found out about that other people might want to know about. Um, and then you can filter by like, okay, show me all of the global, um, the global networks um, that are into spirituality um, and you'd get guy in that um, and then yeah being able to so I mean this is something that where I think like everyone's wisdom could come in is like there should be another button here for having a, a either a map deal view or whatever the everyone's wisdom view is of this data that I can send it to everyone's wisdom and then send it back having it be displayed in some way um, but yeah being able to like change the way the information is viewed. So these are like, you know, cards that are optimized for, for mobile. Um, and then, yeah, I'd like to do a, a mind map view as well of how these organizations are like connected and related. Um, and also being able to like filter by like who actually, you know, curated the knowledge. Um, so what things people added. Um, and then you can also uh, save um, things without even logging in. So I can like save uh, uh, Zeri. And then if I check saved, it'll show me all the ones that I kind of, uh, kind of bookmarked. And then it'll write that back into the database that another person saved it. So you can then see like, okay, Peter bookmarked Zeri, a hundred people saved it. We can like, you know, send, uh, Peter this much, uh, tokens for contributing to the, the, the database. Well done. You're always doing amazing stuff, Vincent. I just wanted to, um, to mention parenthetically that as we, as we all experience conversations about, you know, what should be done legislatively and what should be, what people should be pushing for, um, politically, all the conversations about moderation seem kind of beside the point compared to compelling uh, data portability and, you know, mainly data portability. The idea, if, if we could just get the change that you have real access and ownership of the stuff that you have on different platforms and you can put it anywhere 
um, it's a huge leg up for smaller players and it's a big um, kind of limiting force on bigger players who operate with the, the knowledge as, as you know, we were just saying, like, I've got all the data, so I can do whatever I want. If the data is, is you know, legally required to be portable, the, the situation changes completely in a moment. Yeah, and it feels like the kind of, um, <laughs> I'll use the term like the game A argument. Like if I were to argue why we should be doing this to like NSF, who like doesn't really care about like, you know, regenerative economy or they don't really care or they don't really, you know, um, talk about like, equity in the same way we do. They're just focused on like getting startups funded and like creating more economic opportunities. It's, it's I think one of the arguments that Solid put forward that I was like, ah, okay, this makes sense is like, it actually stifles innovation. And so you can kind of just approach it at the like, this will enable more innovation uh, angle. Um, like that's how you would sell it to like, you know, yeah. uh, NSF or some VC. Um, to like try to get this stuff passed. For, for a split second, I heard I heard what you were saying is NSA, and I was like, <laughs> why, why is this good from the NSA's point of view? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> um, I want to do a shout out to um, uh, a page document document, I guess, on uh, the CMAP. Uh, website and you know, put the link in here. Um, uh, this is totally worth reading, and especially well. And and then I guess if you're interested in um, concept maps in particular, um, let me grab. Anyway, concept maps is is about twenty years old or something like that, and. You know, in, in some ways we've kind of moved on, but one of the things about the people who worked on concepts maps, uh, developing the software, developing the practices and things like that is they actually thought a lot about why we diagram, how we diagram. And so this paper is awesome if you read through it and go, this is how you construct knowledge. You know, this is how you construct knowledge representation, maybe not constructing knowledge, knowledge representation and visualization, why you do it, how you do it and things like that. And so that section constructing good concept maps um, I, I learned a ton from like rocking that, um, uh, you know, going into a, a space and synth making around stuff, you know, it's not necessarily the only way that you do that, but it's structured, thoughtful, easy, you know, brilliant. Um, and, uh, and since I read that, you know, probably 10 or 15 years ago, you know, that's, it, it's a tool now that I have in my tool set, whether I'm at a whiteboard or, or a Procreate or, or Scapel or whatever. Um, super, super valuable, super useful. Um, I also put a link to that in the tools section of the notes. Yeah, I agree. I, I give you, I, yes, Peter, I used to, when I was, <laughs> when I was teaching, we used, I used to use this because just, to have this, the class, we would all pick some area and use a concept map to describe it. And I used to have some other faculty at the University of Texas School of Information go, yeah, what's the big deal? I said, the big deal is that you have to actually be explicit about the concepts and the relationships. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> mind blowing why, to that's me. That's why. <laughs> It's mind blowing to me that in school we learned how to, you know, write a sentence and write a paragraph and write an essay, right? But nobody ever showed me how to do a concept map. And it's like, I, you know, how do you, you know, how do you know what you know? How do you structure information? How do you talk to other people without being able to like represent it well, right? Yeah, I think we got some of that in school, you know, sort of not directly like this, yeah. which I think would be an improvement for education. I, I learned a lot in a class um, uh, that was about Nevada history. I grew up in Nevada. Um, 
And so there was a brilliant teacher who could tell lots of stories and stuff like that, but he was also really good at structuring his information and on a chalkboard probably at the time. Um, you know, I, I learned a lot from that class. Uh, not that he was teaching information structure, but um, it was but, very useful. But he was. <laughs> but he was, yeah. yeah. I think in, in education, right, the, the, the main goal isn't to, isn't to have, isn't to graduate students with creative thinking. That's not yeah. the primary goal. So, however, the good teachers and the good schools will do that anyway, I think. Yeah. But yeah. in general, Definitely. education is about linear thinking and getting to the, finding your way to get to the right answer. And yeah. in which case, you know, um, table of contents matters more than a concept map, right? So yeah. it, it, and, and so I, I'm interested in your perspective, Bill, that you found it useful because I keep thinking of this same concept in my head. One of the great uses, I was, I was sharing this with Pete earlier, and maybe even I shared it with Vincent, is that idea like maybe a teacher could start with a, a very simple concept map at the beginning of a semester, but, but in, you know, I keep thinking of it in the, in the more dynamic form that, that I've been visualizing, right? And then the homework could be uh, each student has to add a piece. And then the next day we, add, we talk about why that piece was added and what their connection is. At the end of every semester, it looks completely different, right? Based on the interests of those students, based on how they connect things, based on, you know, and then the teacher resets and starts the next semester with the same five pieces and it grows again. And everyone learns together about how everything's interconnected. That would be great. I mean, I, I thought it was a, like a graduate thing. And since there were no textbooks, I used to just say, well, we're, I said, you know, we're out here on, we're out here by ourselves. So we're going to try and figure out, we're going to try and learn something. And some students didn't really like that. And so I said, look, I don't know. I'm out here just, on, I don't know, you know, I'm, there's no textbook for me either. So, um, and I think, but I like that idea. I have a woman, a friend of mine who's an art teacher and she has completely turned her art classes around and all the students make up the exams. <laughs> you know, they grade each other on participate. They grade themselves on participation. You know, she's like, I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not here for that. I was recently, I think, in a seminar where it said we need to shift from um, producing leaders who know everything to producing leaders who ask the right questions. And it's a completely different approach to how we think about information, how we use information, what we're doing with it, right? So I think the, the other benefit of things like concept mapping or system mapping or seeing things visually is it's easier to see where the holes are too, especially if we can come up, start to come up with some templates. Like if you're going to start a new business, here are the things that you need, right? And usually that can get really overwhelming really fast, but I think sometimes does system design can help. You don't need to understand all the pieces when you can see that one's, one's, one's empty, right? So having that ability then allows us to, as a community or as an individual, start to fill those holes more quickly and more efficiently and faster and easier. And, and then if the system can actually suggest answers, then we're really, <laughs> we're really starting to move well, things know, along. Pa fast. The famous quote attributed to Pablo Picasso, who says about computers, he said computers are useless. They can only produce answers. Yeah. He wanted questions. You know, he's right. like, I want, I want what I what we need is questions. Right. Not and answers. So if, <laughs> yeah. And so if it's like, why is there a hole there? What do I want to do about it? Where does that lead me next? And so for me, it it quickly went into, you know, how do we not just curate resources, but I mean, to me, the ideal is curate questions too. Yeah, no, that would be right. Well, people no, people asking leading questions for themselves. And this is where, you know, sites like Quora were trying to fill in, if anyone's familiar with that site, yeah, right? yeah. where people are asking questions and experts were supposed to answer, but it isn't really an ex it's really about experts anymore. But that's that same thing, a yearning for coming together and answering what's still, we, we're still pondering. And that's a very human experience that no, no computer is going to say, going to ask you a question that hasn't been scripted by a human. So it's just interesting to me. The psychology of that is interesting to me. Uh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to jump off here. This has been super. I'm ready to wrap too. A super uh, generative uh, interaction. 
But I still want to see something, Wendy. I want to like so that I can <laughs> ask questions about it. I, no, seriously, I think. Okay. We yeah. just have to, even though we we really don't know what we're doing, so we just have to keep moving. You got it. And, I'm there. And bang around and go, man, that really hurt. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine, right? And I, right. And so I I really want to talk to you soon, Michael. Like I need so I need to get. You know, because I'm, I will throw some quick stuff together. That's easy. I'll either do it in Scrapple or do it on Miro. I'll probably bounce around a little bit, getting frustrated with one and thinking another one's better as I figure it out. That's fine. And then I really want to work with a designer, whether it's someone Lauren wants to, I know she's got an intern or something she's been offering, or whether it's someone I have some money that I've put aside specifically for this. So um, it's something that could move quickly. And then when I hit September, I'm an empty nester for the first time. And I will have a lot more time that I can put into this. So I'm, I'm trying to be a little careful just because I want to savor the summer. Yeah, yeah. But well, um, if, there's a, if there's a way when you put something out to gather comments. I will. I think that I know, can I know, I know that's like, that's a, like just there you know, could be a zoo because people can just go crazy. You know, I have the one ring to rule them all and you'd like screwing it up here, <laughs> whatever. Um, but I like really that. think, <laughs> so. I think we really, I don't know. I go back to some stuff. I had, I'm just really into doing more free association and seeing where yeah. those kinds of sparks lead, if yeah. anywhere. Yeah. So. I love that too. I love just the love of learning kind of thing and staying in that space of wonder and creating it together. So I, I completely don't mind doing that. And I will see what I can do to throw something very, very simple together to at least start. I'll do the Kiko lab version because I think there's a lot of people calling for that. Mm. And I will start to then think of what project might benefit best. I think it's smart if I, if we, if, and you guys can help, if you think of something and you want to send it to me too, but I think it's smart if we start with something smaller so that I can focus a little more on the design rather, because that's the piece that really needs the, 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 the play and a little less on, hey, if we could only see this huge and massive chunk of data visually, that would help, right? So those projects scare, scare me just a little bit as, as my next step because it'll end up being more about the data than it'll be about the design, I'm afraid, right? We'll get into a lot of conversations about how the data is being, each piece of data is being represented. That will come, I think, will be like the third step. Yes. But I just need to get a design down that, is intuitively looks good if I, I just know myself, if I get off onto the track of the design, I mean, I'm sorry, of the data, I will forget the focus on the design. And that's really where I think I need to live for a little bit. So yes. So I'll give you a bill's razor, start small and keep it simple, be exactly. successful. <laughs> yeah, Kaizen change, just little steps as we go especially um, when I don't have a ton of time and then it'll come faster. Yeah. Yeah. The nice thing about starting simple, if you discover it's too simple, you know, we've actually learned something now. Right. So. And I, you know, it's all good. And I, it'll go like this. It'll get huge and complicated and then it'll come back in and then it'll go, you know, and that's a natural part of the creative process too. And I, I love that. Well, good luck with the storm fallout or rain out or whatever. And uh, see y'all around the internet. Thanks, all. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay, guys. Otto says goodbye, too. Aw, bye. bye <laughs> Super cute. And I created the New York uh, Mattermost channel and added it. Awesome. Nice. So we'll figure yeah. that out, too. Thanks we for working around my schedule, because that would be fun. Bye, all. Bye.